Professor Frank, pioneer of the jet engine and quite a local personality, born in Earlsdon in Coventry, have you always had an interest in the aviation world? Oh yes, ever since I was four years old. When walking along the butts, I saw, I think that must have been uh, 1911, yes, I saw either Hamill or Hux, I've forgotten now who it was, flying a Blerio monoplane over. Did you have any ambition to follow your father into the engineer, engineering industry at all? Not particularly follow my father, but uh, no, I just wanted to, my great ambition was to fly. Have you seen any great changes in the aviation industry over the years that have particularly interested you? Well, most of those I've managed to bring about. What, anything that sort of stands out in oh, your things, mind? Well, things have gone quite a bit further than I forecast. You know? As you know, I was responsible for the jet engine originally, but um, uh, things have gone far beyond uh, my expectations. You know, engines last many, many times, many, many hours longer than I ever thought they would. Uh, the engines develop far more power than I ever thought they would, and so forth. What about training these days? Do you think that there are actually enough skilled engineers being trained in this country? I don't really know. It's not a subject I've uh, gone into. Moving to a more... Probably not. No. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Moving to a more a company of much local interest in Coventry, Rolls-Royce, how do you think that their engines compare with their um, American and Soviet counterparts? Uh, uh, Rolls-Royce engines? Yes. Oh, I think they're excellent. Uh, they're, uh, I, they're aero engines in particular. I don't know much about other than aero engines, but, uh, oh, their engines are, uh, aero engines are uh, first class. What about engine development on a worldwide basis? Can you see any great future for the jet engine? Oh, the, we're, this, uh, this is the 50th anniversary on the first run of my first engine. But uh, there's a, a, a very much more to come yet. What about moving on to something for the sort of very near future, hopefully, the space travel? Can you foresee any link between the jet engine and the rocket engine in the transcontinental um, space travel that's going to be pioneered? Uh, well, yes. Uh, but I don't know about uh, rocket engine coming into intercontinental travel. I think that can all be dealt with variations on the uh, uh, jet engine. The jet engine itself, plus what it is known as the ram jet, uh, that should be sufficient for commercial aviation. I don't think we need rockets for uh, 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 civil aviation in any form possible at all. You've spent a lot of time in America recently. Yes. Did this move to America, um, did this disrupt any of your own developments or your career hopes at all? Oh no. No, no. I, I, I moved to America 11 years ago when I was already 69 years old. Uh, because I was offered a very good job, at the, an interesting job at the U.S. Naval Academy at Annapolis. And I was also planning to get married to an American girl, lady I should say. And the two things all tied in very well. How do you compare Britain and America in the aviation industry? Do you see them as rivals at all? Oh, they're rivals all right. But... Uh, I just want to see Britain regain the lead it lost many years ago. Uh, people like Rolls-Royce are doing quite a bit, but uh, we need a, a much more drive to get back to where I think we ought to be. So Frank Whittle, pioneer of the jet engine, thank you very much for spending some time with us. Thank you. Thank you.